Welcome to Evolution of Self with me, Britannia. Hello. So this week I want to talk to you about stratagems and I want to give share a little bit about the dyslexic mind. Um, I'm sure I've mentioned in some other of these episodes that I am dyslexic. And because of my dyslexia, because my mind doesn't work in a conventional way, and yet I have to exist in a conventional world, um, myself, and not just me, but many, many dyslexic people, and I'm sure other people with different kind of mental abilities, have learned ways to overcome those challenges. For me, and I think for a lot of dyslexics, it's about creating strategies. Strategies to help you deal with the everyday life and things that most people don't even think about. So one of my challenges in life is remembering names. Um, to me, unless I can tie it into something, it has no construct, it has sort of like an ebullience, it sort of drifts in and drifts out of my mind. So when I hear someone's name or the name of a place, I need to either link it to somebody I already know by that name, or I need to break it down to try and remember it and link it to certain things so that when I see the person, I remember the things and get triggered to remember the name. This also works with remembering other things. So for instance, when um, I'm wiring a plug, it doesn't matter how many times I wire a plug, I still in my mind cannot hold the concept of which color wires go into which of the prongs. However, um, I have taught myself a little, it's not a rhyme, but a little way to remember. And that is that the blue wire goes in the left pin and the red wire goes in the right pin. And obviously red is starts with an R and right starts with an R, so it's easy to remember. And blue, the second letter is L as in left, um, so it's easy to remember it that way as well. Um, other things that I can think of to share with you is I'm currently learning to row. And as part of that, we've got to remember the parts of the boat. Um, although I don't think you call it a boat, but anyway. <laughs> We'll learn that in due course. <laughs> one of them is where the bow and the stern and the port and the whatever are. And um, on one end of the boat, there is a little bobble, like a ball, um, to protect people, um, other boats, etc., because of the pointy end. And so the bow is where the ball is, because B and B. So my life is full of these funny little things that I do to try and make my life easier and help me to fit into a world that I don't really fit into completely. And I'm talking about stratagems today because I've noticed that a lot of people do things over and over again and they don't change or adapt. And I don't know if it's because I've spent my whole life sometimes unconsciously creating these strategies to try and help me fit into this world, or if it's just the type of person that I am. But if I fail, if I do something wrong, if I cock up in one way or another, I tend to sort of sit back and think, okay, well, what do I need to do differently so this doesn't happen again? And what I've realized recently is that not everybody does that. And that was really puzzling to me. So I decided to share an episode so that for those of you who don't create little stratagems in your life, you might decide that when you fall on your face or when something goes wrong, that you could maybe remember this and put this into practice. So at the moment, in fact, actually, this is my last week, um, I'm currently working at a pub in well, close to Bath and I'm there as the supervisor in charge of training. And if anyone's ever worked in hospitality, there's 101 things that can go wrong in any day um, from, you know, ordering the wrong food for somebody to breaking glasses to whatever else. And a number of those things have happened to me in the course of my working there. One of the things that happen quite regularly is that in the trays of glasses, as we pull them out of the glass washer, we have um, water bottles, which are quite large and very solid. And in the same tray, we also have wine glasses, which tend to be very sort of wobbly and teeter over very easily. And as you pull it out and you walk it to where you've got to take it to the bar so the glasses can get dried and put away, quite often the wine glasses will tip over if they're not securely stacked and fall onto these water bottles and smash into pieces. This happened to me, I think, once or twice, and I decided that, you know, to learn from my mistakes and to change what I do. So now when I pull the glass tray out, I tip all the wine glasses over before I start walking to the bar. In that way, they've got nowhere to fall because they're already fallen. And it's just something that I wasn't even thinking about. It just seemed nonsensical to me to make a plan. Um, however, I think I'm the only person there that does this. <laughs> Another thing that I also did was um, outside we have these huge big water 
cooler, not cooler, water containers made out of glass. And um, the customers use them um, as a watering station to fill up their sort of cups with water and whatever while they're sitting outside. And once when I was refilling it with water and ice, um, I took it into the cellar to do that. And the, the sink where I fill it full of water is actually a ceramic sink. And as I went to put it down, because of the condensation, because of the ice inside the glass bottle, um, it was very slippy. And I sort of let it slip just the last couple of centimetres. However, because the basin was made of ceramic, um, it hit it at an angle and a bottom piece of the glass jar came out, it cracked. Um, and to me, these glass jars are quite expensive. So it's not something that if I was the proprietor of the place, I would want to happen many times. So in my mind, I'm thinking, OK, so if this is if and I spoke to the people and I'm not the only person this has happened to, this has happened to a few people, um, then what can we do to prevent this from happening? Um, and in my mind, I thought, well, why don't we use bar mats? They're sort of rubber and you place them on the bar. And then every night, once you know everyone closes up, you could flip it over the side and let it dry off naturally so as not to allow mould. So this is how my mind works all the time. <laughs> it can be a little exhausting. But it means that I very rarely make the same mistake many times over because I'm constantly correcting, learning and changing my behaviour so that I can grow and learn and, and not make the same mistake over and over again. Um, and this is why I want to share it to you so that you can also look at the things that you maybe do a couple of times and start asking yourself, if you don't already, what can I do to prevent this from happening again? What can I do to learn from this? So that your mistakes are no longer mistakes. All they are is steps in learning and evolving. Um, I love it when people say there's no such thing as failure because there isn't. Because if failure is simply a learning step, then there's nothing to be ashamed about. There's nothing to feel bad about. It's simply something that we all go through and we can learn from and change and grow and become better and more than we were before. I hope you've enjoyed this episode. Um, if you have, please like, subscribe, share it with whoever you want to that you think might benefit. If you're interested in coaching with me or any of my online courses, um, if you've watched these, you know the drill, they're in the links below. And I hope you have a fabulous week. So much love from me to you. Bye-bye.